Fronting the gate to the historic Forbidden City, this is Beijing's famous Tiananmen Square. This clock near Mao's mausoleum is counting down to Beijing's date with destiny, the Olympic Games in August 2008. For many in this ancient city, the ticking clock is a ticking time bomb. Since Mao and the Communist Party seized power in Beijing more than 50 years ago, Little in this city has been safe from the wrecking ball. A myriad of architectural and historical treasures are now gone, all in the name of socialist modernisation. Beijing is a city exploding outwards, expanding ever upwards, but also imploding at its heart, where what's left of the old city is now a developer's dream. Just a shade shy of 70, Ning Jinglun is a proud Beijinger. For six centuries, his family has lived in this city. For the past hundred years, home has been a traditional courtyard house, nestled in one of old Beijing's ever-diminishing alleyways, hutongs. Now Ning Jinglun's house is threatened with demolition, and the odds are against him. This is 啊,他除了開發商以外,他還要帶著公安局的,帶著本派出所的警察,帶著法院的。啊,其初中。這樣就顯出來他的拆遷的合法性和他的違法性。啊,這就是一個強制。老爺好。你好,你好,把你跪。
The once stylish and spacious courtyard boasts its own great wall. It slices the house in two, but the other half is off limits. Government officials dispute her ownership and deny her access. The destruction of Beijing's history and heritage has prompted the United Nations to join the debate. As UNESCO, as UN organization, we are willing to offer a platform of dialogue, even controversial dialogue. The UNESCO forum provides a rare opportunity to publicly criticize government and developers alike. Wang Jun is the author of a bestseller, chronicling five decades of destruction of Beijing's unique character. He believes old and new Beijing are involved in a fight to the death. It is the responsibility of the Chinese government, the Chinese companies, and the Chinese people to preserve their past because it's a common legacy that belongs to all of humankind, not just the Chinese people. Edlan Franco is an American writer who lives in Beijing. Sadly, I think what's happening to old Beijing today is a form of cultural genocide, that the past is being obliterated and it's being sold out to, to build a new Beijing. I'm not against having this new Beijing, but at the same time, it should retain the, 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 the efforts made by people in the past. It's almost as if modern urban development in Beijing takes elements from Pol Pot, where we're going back to a year zero. But many of Beijing's old areas are more like slums, run down, dirty and overcrowded. Mao's egalitarian policies of the 50s and 60s led to the state seizing thousands of courtyard houses, haphazard building and the influx of a wave of new residents. It's Catch-22. Officials argue many demolitions are necessary because homes are old and dangerous. As you can see, all these courtyard houses have been built in, where perhaps 50 or 100 years ago just one family would be living in a courtyard house. Now there's about 10. And in the space of two square kilometres of courtyard houses and hutong around this landmark, the Bell Tower, about 60,000 people live. Life at the top couldn't be more different. There are hundreds of developers vying for projects in the city. Zhang Xin is a new face of contemporary Beijing. Her real estate and construction company, Soho, is at the forefront of development in the capital. It's funny that how little uh, we, the Beijingers, um, feel nostalgic about old Beijing and, and, and therefore maybe that's why this, look, this current Beijing municipal government makes so little effort of preserving our culture. Of course, we stories are 
Jiang Xin is planning a high-rise development just to the south of Tiananmen Square. Thousands of people who live there in crowded courtyard houses are set to be given their marching orders by the municipal government. And they say, oh, they are just hoping, you know, this will be their, their you know, best moment in life that someone is coming to redevelop it. Therefore, they will have the means of moving out. They're dying to move out because if you look, if, if you walk in, you will see this is horribly, you know, horrible shanty town. You know, people are just dying to move out. Nothing could be further from the minds of Ding Ai and Ning Jing Lun. Yet when it comes to the law, they're virtually powerless. In China, there's no democracy, no freedom of speech, no rule of law, and no impartial and independent courts. Ding Ai and Ning Jing Lun are desperate to save their houses, but they have no right to publicly protest. So in this ancient city, an ancient recourse to imperial abuses of power. Just like in centuries past, people present petitions to authorities in Beijing seeking justice. Up to three times a week, Ning Jing Lun and Ding Ai gather with others outside the Beijing municipal government to plead for intervention. It's sensitive ground, and it's only possible to film surreptitiously. Today, Ning Jing Lun lives with his wife, their daughter, and granddaughter. He knows what it's like to take on the authorities. His battle with bureaucracy dates back to 1958, when he was just a teenager and the state confiscated 20 rooms from his family's courtyard house. Ning was arrested and banished to the country. It would be another 20 years before he reclaimed just three rooms in the family house. Despite his advancing years, Ning is no longer prepared to let the authorities ride roughshod. He's shaping up for the fight of his life, just like his father, a former head of the Peking martial arts team, who died an enemy of the state. Ning
Today, money speaks louder than now. Beijing is an old city that keeps getting younger by the day. A city where image has triumphed over heritage, and with the Olympic Games looming, Beijing's going for gold. Here, the glorious past seems to have no place in the future.